Okay, this video is gonna be about possible. Whoops. Okay. Okay, possible solutions to food insecurity, including waste reduction and a case study. So first of all, we're gonna look at possible solutions. So sustainable farming is the first one. This basically puts the emphasis, puts an emphasis on environmental resources of soil, water, and trees first emphasizes social welfare to increase income and food supply, it focuses on permaculture, developing agricultural sediments basically through agriculture. And the pros is that it creates less waste, it mitigates carbon emissions and reduces the impact of climate change, protects biodiversity and increases standards of living. Cons, it requires training, access to markets can be difficult and it could limit other uses of land. Um, okay. And now we'll move on to the second one, which is land reform. So this is the equal distribution of land creation. It provides tenants with security and controlled rent for agriculture. Pro pros is that it benefits the um, economy. It has provides less. It creates less poverty, higher productivity and yields, stabilizes wages and exports increase. Cons. There's maybe no financial support for the farmers, might reduce productivity, commercial farms might be more efficient, maybe political issues as well. Okay, so next solution is the Green Revolution. So the Green Revolution is a research and development initiative with the aim of increasing global agricultural production in LICs. So the pros are that it's large scale and it provides high yields, less hunger, plants become resistant to pests and herbicides. Also, by the way, the Green, Revo Green Revolution was like, took place in the 1960s. The cost of it were that it, the lands had to be fallowed, which is very costly. It can reduce soil quality. There's also high levels of food waste, social resistance as well. Okay, and now we're gonna look at food aid. So food aid is the precision, provision of emergency food in a famine situation. So the pros of this is that it does reduce poverty in developing countries, cheap, good for emergencies, uses food surplus so low cost for producers, um, and it represents like this idea of international commitment and relations. Cons, it creates food dependency, it may distort local markets by altering prices, it creates a risk of corruption maybe by hoarding the, f hoarding the food by governments and things or like leaders of a country and it's also quite a short-term solution solar irrigation is basically mobile photovoltaic cells connect to pumps which draws water from wells and rivers powered by light energy it's reliable it's low cost clean energy good for water scarce areas with lots of sun it's good for drought conditions relies okay so the cons is it relies on sunlight which differs in strength over different times different seasons um and it can be difficult to regulate and it also is susceptible to the impacts of climate change which kind of makes it more uncertain maybe fair trade is a trade agreement by the dub the world trade organization food and agriculture organization and fair trade connects disadvantaged workers with consumers livable wages and it it creates livable wages and reduces exploitation. The pros of it is that it benefits communities, small businesses can grow, there's no discrimination, reduces child labor so children can actually attend school instead of like being in child labor practices. It's often organic and eco-friendly, it increases standards of living. Cons are that it there's high fees to be certified as a fair trade school. It's limit there's a limited consumer base due to high prices reduces product choice and it, there's a low accountability um, of the producers and there's also a lack of incentive because there's no guaranteed price okay now we're going to look at waste reduction the final one which is mentioned in the syllabus so it's quite important so it the causes of waste reduction or waste in the first place is this inefficient harvesting, inadequate local transportation, bruising of the products, Pro produce can be lost in the fields, it can be discarded on initial sorting, it's lost in store, it's lost in post storage inspection, rejected after washing, lack of refrigerated transport, poor roads, poor weather. So this, but actually something that's not mentioned here is that there's actually a lot of waste reduction in the actual consumption of the food because like individuals might leave the food too long they might buy too much they might just all these different factors that contribute to it um so the solutions to this is having a meal planner rotate food in the fridge buy what you need only what you need 
freeze food, compost food, volunteer at a food bank, request representatives to support policies for lower food waste, and recognize that sell by and use by dates are actually negotiable. They're not like very strict as like many people think and they just throw the food away. Um, but of course it depends on the food. So like it's better to research into it a bit more. So now we'll move on to the final case study for this. So case study is this is solutions to food insecurity in Yemen. So the this is mainly just all the food and agriculture organizations. So they donated two million US dollars in twenty nineteen. Their schemes were crop revitalization of fifty two million dollars, staple crop and vegetable seed provision, veterinary services. And then in October 2018, these were some of their big achievements. 46,000 people got farming tools and cowpea seeds in our Abayan, Abayan, um, in Yemen. 1 million animals were vaccinated to help 40,000 house, 40, households. 80, 50 women headed households received dairy equipment as well. So these were solutions to the kind of honestly ongoing humanitarian crisis in Yemen.